Welcome everyone, episode three. We have some delightful pieces coming up, so stick around for the next five seconds. Mini Matters, a miniature painting podcast. Right, Lionel, I believe we've got some scorchers, as they say. That was deliberately weird, but um, we do have some very nice pieces uh, for you guys to look at. Um, Anything to add to a brief synopsis of the upcoming episode? You were going to say something about Bang Our Bell. <laughs> uh, it's like overtly sexual. Um, yeah, if you guys like the show so far, we've only had two. So maybe now or at the end, just yeah, uh, click the subscribe and the bell button. Uh, there's a subtle difference between the two. I uh, don't know. Enjoy them. Yeah. I actually do know the difference. I think that if you click the subscribe, you're subscribed and they'll come up in your feed. I click if you click the bell, you'll get a notification. So do both, please, if you so desire. Content. Content is key, isn't it? It's the king, they say. So I guess we should jump in. Unless. No. Okay. Also, I will point out the format this week. Uh, and you'll see, in fact, the last two episodes, so it's nothing new. Um, we are using our Instagram posts and obviously we talk about it. So follow us on Instagram and we'll put the link in description as normal. And um, yeah, basically you can see everything there and then obviously we will discuss it normally in the news. Uh, and there's also a hashtag there that you can, you can follow and post. That's how it works, Instagram, right? You follow an hashtag, do you? Yeah, uh, well, uh... We use hashtag Newsdesk for our, all our news items, and this first news story is a case in point. Um, Cybermyths, who are the individuals who produce this model, uh, reached out to me actually on Instagram showing that we shared uh, companies' news and releases, and they asked me if we would be interested in sharing information about them. So that's what I've done. That's what this first post is about. They've reached out to us. So Cybermyths, if you don't know, are a, a patron who produce ST. STL files uh, for 3D printing. Um, and what they've got is they've got oh, a subscription whereby a subscription whereby if you sign up, you get access to their files. However, the reason they wanted to get the message out is if you're not too sure about their files or you're new to 3D printing, they're actually offering a promotion at the moment whereby you get a free model that you don't need to pay for. So you can have a look at the quality and have a go. Now, obviously, Jamie and I don't 3D print. It's something that I am interested in because I think it, I think there's uh, a lot of creativity and um, influence that you can use there. I know individuals like Joshua Lay have started using 3D printing and that's coming across in their pieces. Um, so other than that, we can't offer much more insight. But if you're interested in 3D printing, particularly stuff which has got a cyberpunk or a sky fi feel, then cyber myths is worth a look. Because I am... Um... There's a possibility I didn't realise this wasn't Games Workshop. Now, I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. <laughs> uh, I think it's probably, well, it depends on your view on Games Workshop. But um, yeah, yeah, it's crisp. It looks good. Um, and I do know a bit about 3D printing, but not, not as much as maybe somebody who has one. Mostly because of the the sculpts I get, I, I get them printed in 3D. Um, I just think you'd want to spend a little bit more money than the cheapest if you were going to be printing your own models to paint. Unless it was like a gaming thing, in which case you don't need to push the boat out. But yeah, good stuff. That's it's a really interesting business model as well, actually, especially in the current market. You think like people are so scared to release STLs because then they can just copy paste to their friends. But it kind of needs to go that way eventually, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's certainly a sector that's opening up. It's, it's much more prevalent now than yeah. it probably was two years ago. It's the bloody 3D printers, eh? Okay, so the next news item is from Hera Models. Um, hopefully you'll like this one, Jamie, because it's an elf. <laughs> now, the name of this sculpt is Arthemis, which is basically a 75 mil. Um, release which has been added to their old world range which is effectively their fantasy range 75 mil um, resin piece which is available to order now it's been sculpted by Joanne Novellato and I apologize if I pronounced that name wrong and the concept art has been done by Block San Sanchez now I don't know if that's a real name but that that's what's been credited <laughs> 
under Instagram. So I don't know whether that's an alias. So that's available now from Hero Models. Hero Models are a very popular Spanish company um, who have got some great academic busts. The York is infamous now um, on Instagram has done the rounds and they always deliver high quality pieces, uh, well finished. And this is a welcome addition to their existing line. Did you paint an orc? Did you paint that orc? Is that the orc you painted? Had, yeah, I've, I've had two attempts at that orc, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. That's why it's infamous. Yeah, I do know the orc. Uh, and also Herrera models are like one of my favourite painting people at the moment, somehow. I, it always features, I don't know, man. They're so flippin' visual. Um, but yeah, how much is this bad girl? Do you know? In terms of price, I'm not too sure. I think they're I think they're 75 mils. Usually retail retail about somewhere between 45 to 50 euros. Um, so it'll be in that ballpark figure. But yeah. I've always found them to be reasonably priced for the quality of sculpts you get from them. Yeah, and, and casting. Can't be understated, I don't think, Lionel. You know, sometimes you order a model and you're like, this is brilliant, and it's just the cast. It's just not there. No. So no, like I said, Hero models are, are top quality. Um, always when I've ordered yeah. from them, yeah, it's it, they are credible to credible uh, manufacturer. So I wouldn't hesitate in recommending them. Yeah, let's do it. Let's pull that trigger. Let's have a painting competition, but it has to be speed painting, fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, I do. I I I, I like I like parts of it, um, as in. It's not elder, so it's it's hard to get past. But I think generally it's a it's a good it's a good model, and I'd very very much like to see a, a box art of it because normally their box arts are just so damn good. Yeah, yeah, basically, and that normally brings things to life for me. I think, I think another uh, uh, I don't know if this is a criticism, but lots and lots and lots of people do the three D render exactly like this, and there's a kind of glean a shine to it. And I think this has been my main problem why historically I've never liked 3D sculpts because the renders. So until I see the paint job, I'm put off by the render because I can't imagine painting that, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas when you see the paint job, obviously things sort of click, well, at least for me, click in my mind. And I'm like, I can imagine painting like this, this, this. Um, and I had a 3D sculpt done and it was the exact same thing. It was this render and I didn't really like it. And then she sent me some special renders where it looked like resin. And I was like, ooh. So I went from not loving it because the render was weird to thinking this is really good and loving it. Anyway, it's great. <laughs> Just a bit. Yeah, I do. I do like it, by the way. Just for the record. I have clicked. Wait, OK. Oh, I see what you're saying. Double feature. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously you covered this in your show last week, but I thought I'd revisit it in terms of, I think you explored the the paint job, didn't you? But I just wanted to make that connection between Chimera models. So this is a new release from Chimera models. It's called Paris Phone. Um, I've got to say this week oh, yeah. for me is going to be challenging in terms of names, both of <laughs> models, sculptors and painters, but it's called P Paris Phone. It's a 75 uh, mil sculpt. It's been sculpted by Lan Garo um, and it's been painted by Christophe, and I apologise, surname Karbaljix, um, but it, he, he it's... He told me how to pronounce it, actually. Okay. Yeah, that's all I've got. And it's... <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to give me the correct pronunciation. <laughs> no, so I, I can't I remember what it was. So I apologise for the pronunciations there. However, that's available to order now from Chimera. Um, obviously, everybody said how amazing this paint job is, and obviously, I add my voice to that um, to that crowd of people saying it is an amazing paint job. However, what is interesting about this order is there is also the opportunity to buy a tutorial video of how to paint the model by that's that cool. artist which totals nine hours in tutorial time, uh, broken down into separate chapters. Now, I believe you can buy the video by itself or you can buy it as a package deal 
with the model as well, which is a very nice idea, actually. Um, and you can buy that combo together. So you have the model and you've got some guidance on, on how to do it. Now, if there's nine hours of teaching time, I'm going to hazard a guess that it's a very extensive and detailed look at how this artist, Christoph, has achieved this result. And I think you covered it, Jamie, when you looked at it in your up to a show, but it's an amazing rendered piece. Um, I understand that it has all been done primarily by brush and not airbrush. So the finish and the blends are amazing. And the manner in which it's been rendered, particularly the sphere on which she's standing, which you can't actually see in this photo, but the way that was rendered and the chrome effect that he achieved was 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 outstanding. So if you're, if you're up to the challenge and you want to try and have a go at emulating it, Chimera models have got you covered with both the piece and the painting tutorial. It's a good idea. Cheeky little video with it. I think it, it's, it's actually a good idea because it will promote people buying it because they're like, I could learn how to paint and I get a yeah, very nice. Well done, Chimera and Christoph. Um, I don't know why that wasn't even in a Polish accent. Um, it, it was actually a combination of airbrush, I believe, and painting. Oh, was it? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's what you said in the comment. I suppose I should fact check that. But um, yeah, I think, I think this model has made me really want to get good at stippling because um, I think there's a few examples of it where you can see it and mine is just you know the obviously when you practice more you get better but still like I, to be able to I resolve think, I think there's I think there's paint jobs now as I get more familiar with painting that I can look at them and I can analyze them and I can see how they've done how they've been done or have a have an idea of how they've been done this is the first paint job I've seen in a long time where I've looked at it and I've had that. I just don't understand where, where he started and, and what he's done. It's, it's, yeah. it's taken me back to that level of astonishment and amazement, um, which I think is a testament to, to how well the paint has been laid down. Makes you, makes you feel like a child again, Lionel. Good. I'll move on with no comment. <laughs> I've, okay. I've, so, uh, Oh, sorry, that. No, I was going to say. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Well, I was going to say, I've seen this little girl come alive. Like, the first post he posted was just the undercoated thing. It's an interesting, mm -hmm. like, sometimes people post it. So, yeah, please. Okay. So, this is a release from the company called Rihanna Roger Miniatures, which is a new company that came about late last year. Now, my understanding is they haven't launched any miniatures yet, but what they are doing is they're teeing up for a Kickstarter, which is due to come soon. Now, the Kickstarter is based on artwork by Christopher Lovell, who's an artist, and I had a look at his Instagram page, um, and he's probably one of the most handsome men I've ever seen in terms of an art. If he wasn't an artist, he could comfortably be a model. Um, and he, 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 he's got an eye for this art and he does this 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 fantasy art and they seem to have the ip for a number of his pieces and they're bringing a number of those pieces to a kickstarter with various artists uh, later this year and they'll be available to to obviously back and purchase this is the first one that they've shown off and this is the first one that they've shown the box art for the box art has been done by athami alonzo and the name of the piece is temperance um so this is the first box art they've, they've done and that there's a number of other pieces coming. I believe Mark Maskelands is also involved in a box art of another piece, uh, which is part of this series. Um, but I don't have any images of that. We certainly will when it comes out, I'm sure. Uh, I had to say, I think this year, bloody, I mean, I need to ask him how he did it. <laughs> the smoothness on the, on the legs the arms is outrageous I, I, isn't it i suspect there will be a video tutorial on his version yeah. of patreon which is, yeah, not, is it not original not original yeah, minis, models. Or no, minis. Not orig yeah not original models um, minis. and <coughs> and um i suppose the other point that isn't shown in these two images here but i think we've got an image later on is that he's done this individual crouching over a lake and he's free-handed a reflection of the model facing back up at her. So I don't know if we've got an image of that. We do indeed. So I was just confirming if it was not original, not original minis.com. It is not original. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. We could put a yeah, link, exactly. can't we, in the description. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so this is this is her and her zoomed out. It's looking like it's nearly done, to be honest, or that might even be the finished. This is finished. Sure. Yeah, yeah. This is finished. Um, Some casted shadows as well on the boobs. boobies. But even the vase as well. But, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's yeah it's, it's, it's brilliant. Obviously, we're not here to wax lyrical with a news line, or we're impartial. But, um, mm. yeah, it's outrageous. <laughs> so, once again, if you're yeah. interested in this model and other models in the series, head over to Rihanna Rojo Miniatures. We'll put a link in the description below. Follow their Instagram, and they'll let you know as soon as the Kickstarter goes live. Just notice the leaf. Anyway, yeah, definitely check it out. Sorry. But the leaves have casted shadows, which is pretty damn cool. Those two leaves at the back um, yeah. to her upper it, right. Like. It's a piece, the more you keep looking, the more you find. And I, I, I don't know why, but I'm drawn to the vase as well. So the ceramic feel he's managed to achieve yeah. on that vase. It's a um, contrast, Lionel, for the soft skin. Smooth, smooth. Well done, Athami. You obviously know what you're doing. Um, I might shout. <laughs> Man alive. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the uh, well, I was going to say elephant in the room, but we hadn't posted it yet. So no one knew that it was coming up. But I always I love these releases because the excitement that gets surrounded them it is it is like a, a quite a unique thing in the yeah. in the miniature thing at the moment. Please. Yes. Give them some info. Yeah, so this is the latest sculpt by Lucas Pinner, uh, better known as Spira Mirabilis. And I apologise again if I've, no, I've sure. mispronounced that name. But obviously, as you've suggested, Jamie, he's quite an infamous sculptor now within the industry. And particularly his release style is, is quite infamous. What he does is he releases a sculpt, he announces it's coming, releases it for a 48 hour window period. At that point you order, and after that you can't get a hold of the sculpt again. And my Unless understanding you pay is- like seven times on eBay, the price that was the original. Yeah. Yeah. And my understanding is he destroys all the, uh, all the molds and everything. So they can't be reprodu reproduced by him afterwards. So it's a case of once it's gone, it's gone. And there's a hysteria that comes around that every time he announces a, a new, a new release. So his last one was the seven dwarfs, which came out, I believe in December. And this is his latest one. This one is going to be released on the 12th of March and it will be available to pre-order for that 48 hour period. And then after that period, it's going to be gone. Um, in terms of what it's called, I've, I've written it down. It's Baby Kappa, it's being called. Um, however, I mate, can't help. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, the little guy on the back is the, the Kappa. Yeah, the... but obviously my intuition is telling me this is actually a homage to the Mandalorian because obviously the Mandalorian was accompanied by a baby Yoda, which that creature I suppose is akin to, but more importantly, mm -hmm. the Mandalorian is effectively a Ronin. And what you've got there carrying that creature is a Ronin warrior. So a lone warrior. So I just wonder whether it's a uh, not so subtle or tongue in cheek or a, uh, a kind of nod towards the Mandalorian without obviously affecting any IP issues. Um, and it's his sort of tribute to that. That's my take on it. Um, he's not. I've not seen anything in the description that says anything like that. But that's the conclusion. Because you wouldn't want to if it was IP issues, was it? Keep that. Keep that well, stump. Yeah. Well, no. It's it's a concept, isn't it? So there's no IP because he's obviously not lifted any recognizable traits from yeah. it. But I yeah, think the fact that there's a ro yeah, I think the fact that there's a Ronin character, which what a Mandalorian is carrying a baby creature. I think that's a nice little homage to to the Mandalorian. I actually thought it was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle as a baby, weirdly, when I first saw it. Um, and I thought, why has he got a baby turtle there as a humanoid? Um, but then I saw the beak and I was like, okay, it's, it's well, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, not, it's not a terrapin or a turtle. Yeah, pretty much. That was pretty much my thought on it. I thought, um, well, I mean, if we're going to go into it, I, I thought actually that that material would be like that excites me to paint the the, the cloth on the less excited by painting the face because I can't paint skin. 
I've come to terms now actually that I just can't paint skin. So that's a little side note for anybody. I like I've tried and I tried. I just I'm, I can't do it. So I could paint the cloth and then I don't know, just not paint the face. I guess all the arms. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the hand. I don't know why. The left hand of the shonen. Yeah, um, I, I'll real. be ordering it. Yeah, I'll be ordering it. I think I, I ordered the Seven Dwarves, um, but I find that's probably an intimidating piece to start off with because mm. there's so many bodies and figures on there. So I think that will stay yeah. in its box for a while. But I'll order this one, and I, I think I'll have a go at it. Um, it'll be interesting to see what some of the pro painters do with it. There's been some really nice uh, versions of his goblin uh, kicking about. Yeah. I know you're working on one as well at the moment, aren't you, Jamie? As a personal um, project. So once again, it'll be interesting. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see what painters do with this piece as well. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of scope. There normally is, which is what's quite fun about them. Um, I said I'm, I'm painting because it, you know I've had it now for like five months. Anyway, we will see. <laughs> Such a downer. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited. Excited to uh, see. see. I'd like, I suppose it's like a, a normal scale, like a 1 by 10 or something, which is quite good. I mean, the amount of details on it. I know I just put away the image. Should we say we're done with the news? Um, no, there's, no, there's one more piece. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, the eye. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, that was why okay, that excitement so, was there. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, a little bit of a different take on the news. This isn't actually a product that you can buy, like all of most of our news stories are, or a, a scalp that you can buy. However, when I saw this, I thought it was definitely newsworthy. Uh, yeah. Once again, this piece has been produced by Ithami Alonso, um, and he's done something very special here. Um, there was that paint job by Arno last year um, she dances alone uh, which I think a lot of people paid attention to and was quite critically acclaimed because it moved what we saw our industry up to a more artistic or a more maybe seriously accepted um, in the art world and I think what Ithami has done here is going to do pretty much the same sort of thing I think it's an exploration and a take that we've not seen before it's worth mentioning that the sculpt is done by Barone artwork now Barone is an individual who although he's got a patron and teaches people how to sculpt I don't believe he sells his sculpts so to get it is something pretty special he gifts them to individuals um, you can't buy them. So even if you wanted this sculpt, which is basically based on Mads Mickelson, who's an actor who was in uh, Casino James Royale. Bond. He was, yeah. yeah, the villain in Casino Royale. And he was Hannibal <laughs> in the TV series adapt adaption. Even if, you, even if you wanted this, you can't get a hold of it unless he gifts it to you. And he tends to gift it to pro artists and then they do their take on it. So he's obviously given one to Ithami and Ithami has done this abstract expression, I think, where there's been ex an explosion of brush strokes, um, a whirlwind, I suppose, of creativity that he's captured in this piece. And I think one, not only is it a beautifully rendered piece, but the expression and the emotion he's captured in it is something very special, I think. It's, it's, it's Picasso-esque in a weird way with the circles around the head and the skin, um, not to say you know, that somebody can't create their own style. But that's the feeling yeah, I got, but, interestingly. Yeah, when when I was looking at it, I suppose the nearest I could say was it, was it was abstract expressionism. So if you look at those pieces of work, it's where they tend to put bold brush strokes down. They tend to put paint in a very undiluted, pure form. In fact, some of them can just be like, I suppose, you know, where they get the paintbrush and they just throw it and they create <laughs> various shapes. And then that well, becomes it's good a piece to... of art. So it's good to see the whole fuck smoothness thing is uh, is taking off on the mainstream. Basically, like uh, as I said in Mark's video, we did. Um, you have to be so talented to to do this, you know, to do to do the whole free brush stroke and well, essentially this. Like it it it, it looks like it's all an accident, you know, because it's not structured. As it were, but there is structure there, 
it just mm. doesn't it doesn't look like there is if, if that makes sense so i think i think the yeah. other thing worth noting is I think the other thing worth noting as well is it's effectively as much a sculpture as it is a painting. So obviously yeah. those brush strokes, we don't have, there is a video on Life Family's Instagram if you go or social media if you go to it, but when you rotate it, those brush strokes are actually coming off the back. They've been molded on. So he's mm. obviously molded and sculpted physical uh, protrusions and then laid the paint over the top of that. So it's very clever, very nice. And I suppose, it's true artwork in 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 the truest and rawest form paint and that's and that's and that's twice we've mentioned him in one show so i think 2021 Since... is going to be his year <laughs> or the start of 2021 and now he could take a break because he's so prominently worked well or well, hopefully actually um the rest of the year is fantastic for him as well but yeah, yeah. And once again, once again, I suspect there'll be a tutorial or an insight into this on his mm. not original minis as well. So yeah. go and yeah. check that out if you want more insight as to how it was done. Yeah, good old. I like that people keep pushing the the boats out on um, what the norm is. You know, I think that's a refreshing style, much like this video that we're doing now, Lionel and I, the uh, the news desk. So, you know, if you <laughs> waiting for a wry smile Lionel. if you uh, if you've enjoyed the video the 26 minutes that we've done so far um we asked at the beginning the the bell and the um i forgot the word subscribe button um if you so enjoyed it we would appreciate that uh very very much and then we know that you can possibly watch us later whenever you're free and if you could spend five minutes just to put a comment down below, anything, it all helps the algorithm. It all helps us get discovered. And then obviously, you know, the more views and the more subscribers we get, the more encouraged we are to keep producing content. So we'd yeah, appreciate good that content. too. Good, wholesome family content this is. This is the kind of show that you could play to your children and they'd complain and then ask for something like Dougie or Peppa Pig. Uh, but yeah, you know, you can try try and get away with it right guys next week i was waiting for Lionel to say like next week but yeah next week guys see you then yeah see you next week guys see you.